Hey everybody, welcome back. We're going to be using some acrylic blanks to make some really super simple magnets here. Uh, what I was going to show you is how I separate a simple, um, like a basic design that you've brought in from, from Google into different colors. This one, I'm not sure who owns this design. Honestly, I tried to find it um, and I, I just kept finding dead ends on it. So I did in, bring it in from, from just from a Google search. And I'm going to duplicate it four times because I want four different colors. I find this the easiest way rather than importing things over and over again. So now I'm just in the contour button and I want every other one yellow. So I'm just going to um, click on every other one and that's going to make it disappear. Um, my mouse was doing something funny here. So I kept thinking I was clicking on one and it was clicking on a different one. So it was kind of playing a game with me. So you can see me click a whole lot here. Uh, normally it's not this complicated, but for whatever reason, the you know right brain wasn't talking to the left brain in this case. And then, so I'm just going to get rid of all the waves. You can see me just clicking and I couldn't figure out what was going on because it shouldn't be this complicated. <laughs> um... I do find this the, the easiest way if you've got a nice easy design that has good cuts, like good separated cuts like this. It can be quite quick when things are working properly. I'm just going to turn this yellow so I know what color vinyl I'm going to cut it out with. And moving on to the next one. Same idea, I'm just going to go to contour. And then I forgot what my order was, so I'm going to go back and check it. Then you can see I forgot one piece of the yellow, so hide. There you go. There we go. So, so I'm just going to hide every alternating one and um, turn it orange and then just work on the blue. So that's the easiest way. It's a good way. And then I'm just going to speed all this up for you so we can get down to making the magnets. So here we've weeded everything and you can see I've got 1.5 inch, I dropped one, acrylic blanks. These I got from Roshko Innovations here in Canada. They do not have a hole in them. You need a little bit of transfer tape, Gorilla Glue, please don't put it in your hair. You can use a couple different types of glue. I just kind of, I googled which ones were safe uh, for magnets. There's the magnets, I got those off of Amazon and uh, Super Glue said it was safe. So, I mean, this stuff worked really, really well. Uh, I will show you in a second everything I use to weed these tiny little intricate details. There's my tools of choice and the light's going to turn on in a second. Forgot one. There we go. So here's my favorite weeding tools for tiny, tiny things. That is a borer. It's, it's found with um, the beaded beads in the beading aisle. Some really sharp tweezers, those were from Diamond Painting, and this is called a weeding pen. It's a really, really sharp tool. I actually like the boring tool the best. Oh, the magnets are making everything stick together. I videotaped myself actually doing the intricate weeding. Somebody had asked me how I do tiny, tiny weeding, 
and for whatever reason that video just didn't make it. Um, I'm not sure what, what I pushed on my camera, but it didn't record, unfortunately. So I will try to do that. I do a lot of very tiny, intricate weeding. I'm not sure why it's really, really my jam. Uh, I'm just removing the, the paper that always comes on. For whatever reason, it was really, really stuck on these ones. Um, just try to be as careful as you can. You can scratch the, the vinyl. See me trying all the tools here. So I have all the vinyl separated between the different ones that I want to work on. It is just, um, it's just permanent vinyl. Some of it's Oracle vinyl, some of it's Cricut vinyl. I, I just pick up, I just save um, bits and pieces of vinyl in a folder and I just use whatever I need and whatever color I've got. So mix and match and it all, it all works out okay. I'm actually going to be using this mat, which is why it's underneath. Um, I find that when you put vinyl on acrylic blanks, that the blanks jump up to it. I'm not sure why that is, but I'm going to be using the mat to keep the, the vinyl blank down. It's kind of a strange phenomenon. If you've ever worked on, on acrylic blanks, you probably know what I'm talking about is they you know, as you get close, they jump up and not always where you want them to. So and there's a piece of hair on my mat. That was making me crazy. There you go. So I think I managed to do all of these with one tiny piece of transfer tape too. I'm quite stingy when it comes to transfer tape. I try to reuse as much as I can because crafting can create quite a bit of garbage. Transfer tape's being pain. So I'm just going to move my design, on, you can see it jumped there, onto the transfer tape. Use some sort of burnishing tool. Um, the ones I like I got off of Amazon, they've got a bit of a felt edge to them. Um, I find that you can, you know, really go over stuff pretty hard. And then I lied and used it backwards, there I go. And just be patient when you're putting the vinyl onto the acrylic blank. I do, if my acrylic blank is 1.5 inches, I do set my designs to be slightly smaller. I set these ones at 1.4 inches. I do find it easier if they are just a, a hair smaller than the actual blank itself. see it popped off the um and then you just move on to the next the next layer it's a really quick quick easy project i find all acrylic blanks are, are really quick easy projects it's just a matter of designing what you want i often do that sitting on the couch If you are weeding tiny things, just be really patient and be reasonable. I do find the dots on eyes on itty bitty things, I just give up and I, and I don't. Uh, it's not really worth my time. Uh, if you're struggling with it, make sure that your, uh, your needle is fairly new. I find if once I have cut paper or anything glitter vinyl, anything like that, it really dulls out my blades. Uh, more quickly than when I just cut vinyl. When I just cut vinyl, I can cut, use a blade for quite a while. We'll just move on to the next one here, and I'll do the, the next couple in, in double time. Same idea. We're just going to stick it down to the board and just start layering the vinyl.
Here you go, you can see all the vinyl is done. And at this point you can use kind of whatever you like for the coat. You can use Mod Podge Diamond Magic, you can use resin or H, or sorry, um, UV resin, bright tone, whatever top coat that you have on hand that you like to use, you can use it. Um, I usually use the Mod Podge for something like this. I find that these don't need to be that strong, they're just magnets. So the Mod Podge will really do just fine, just like an ornament. If I was making one of these for a keychain or something that's gonna need a little bit more of a durable coat, I would definitely go with either the resin or the bright tone. So I've just added some bright, uh, some Mod Podge to the top and I'm just working it around using a silicone, what is that, a silicone brush of sorts, trying to make sure that I don't get too many bubbles. Mod Podge is easy for me to get here in Canada. Um, it's fairly inexpensive. I can buy it in two packs at Michael's with a coupon, which helps. Um, if I'm looking at Bright Tone or even UV resin, I'm ordering it from another country and I have to wait. So it's always a really good alternative for me, you know, for on these little projects. I really do like working with acrylic blanks. My daughter helps. Um, I'm not sure if you'll see her in this video, but she was helping with some of these. It's an easy project we can do together. Now these have dried just overnight. You can see how great they've turned out. And I just have to remove the, the backing. This one I did, there you go. We're just gonna remove the backing, 
add the magnets, let them dry, and they're all done. So really fun little project, little weekender. This backing tape, for whatever reason, was really, really difficult to get off. I wasn't quite sure what was going on. doing here is I, I read somewhere to scratch up the magnet it really didn't work I, I mean I didn't want to push too hard either other than that I just glued them on and they're totally fine with this this gorilla super glue they are absolutely fine the way they are so I added a dot of the super glue held the magnet on uh, the magnets did try to move a little bit so watch how much glue you used I just added you know a little bit of pressure with trying not to touch the glue until it dried for a few seconds, and they are awesome. My daughter's been playing with them for a couple days now. And that's it. It they really turned out really awesome. There we go. Thanks everybody for watching. If there's anything that you would like me to explain in more detail or, you know, 
break down a little bit further, please let me know. Uh, if you like this video, can please like and subscribe and maybe send me a comment and let me know what I can either whatever I did well or what I could do better in the future. I really, really appreciate it and thanks for watching. And here's a little shot of a couple on the fridge. Thanks again. Have a good one. Bye.